so hello everyone um thank you i really want to thank the organization committee to allow me the online presentation uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, our work, Facets, Discovering Faceted Set of Entities, where um, the work was mainly done at MPI with the collaborator uh, Hipa Sinwan and Gerhard. So this is a, actually Discovering Faceted Set of Entities means the, simply the set expansion, however, the expansion over the different facets. So the very first question comes here that uh, why are we actually talking about such an exploration, faceted exploration? If you look at the current online uh, search platform, whether it's a YouTube or Google Bing or any Netflix or any kind of online platform, when you search for a particular entity, normally it provides you some more information of the related entities. Um, for example, here, uh, if I search Singapore to Google, it provides me some uh, some places to visit. However, under a very general explanation saying things to do, we have no idea whether it's an entertainment park or it's a sports uh, event or anything, right? It's a very general recommendation. On the other hand, we also get some few more suggestions for other countries. And again, here, it's not very clear why such countries are coming up for the suggestions or why people have to look at it, whether it's because the same as the important travel destination as Singapore or it's a South Asian countries, because you can see it uh, has Sydney from Australia and some other countries as well. So the idea is that when someone such such kind of content, rather just giving certain suggestion, but about we give some suggestion with some explanation associated with it, which gives better idea why we are giving that suggestion. So if I look for the Jade Bezos, I would prefer to have uh, some uh, some. Uh, explanation uh, with the associated extension like Elon Musk and Sundar Pichai is related to Jeff Bezos because of they are all uh, very salient tech company CEOs or popular tech company CEOs, same as for George Lucas to Jeff Bezos as billionaire. So that's the main motivation for uh, the project. So here, um, if we look at uh, the whole statement, problem statement, we want to discover very compact group of facets for a particular query, where each of these facets must be very coherent, like entities holding within a facet. And we also want to have those facets slightly diverse. We don't want to be billionaire, American billionaire, a sub subset of billionaire, and so on. So how do we reach to such diverse faceted expansion? And that's why we formulate or try to formulate this problem as an optimization problem. We called it faceted set expansion problem, where we have some uh, set of entities distributed over different facets. And here, one important thing here uh, is that labeled facets, because we wanted to generate the explanation. And this label might give us the explanation at the end. Um, and the output, we actually provide certain parameter L and K. It's just the parameter saying that I want to expand this particular certain query entity to um, L number of groups where each groups are also having K number of salient entities that are related to the query. So if we look at the optimization problem, it mainly has three different components. The very first component of the objective function is that the query has to be related to the um, entities we are finding within each of this group. Uh, that's the similarity to query. Then each of this group has to be coherent. So we should not mix up the billionaire and the CEO together. So that's exactly the coherence of the group. And later, because we want to find this G1 and G2 to be dissimilar enough to provide more exploration for the query entity, we would basically find the similarity between each of this group and then basically negate it from the optimization function. So that's our whole problem, where one of the important constraint is that all these group must be part of the input facets so that at the end we can actually generate the explanation for the label. The main challenge here, you can see that number of 
entities uh, and number of facets we have is basically in terms of um, hundred of thousands. And from there, we try to find out maybe three groups with five entities or this L and K is a very, very small. So this is leads to a combinatorial problem and apparently NP hard due to this particular three constraint. So if we look at this problem, uh, we want to resolve it with an approximated solution. And the solution comes from a random walk-based um, iterative approach that I'm going to very briefly uh, discuss here. So what is our input? As I said, this is nothing but the labeled facets. So what are labeled facets? You can consider Wikipedia category. So the label could be the American billionaire, with the member Jeff Bezos, Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and so on, right? Uh, similar kind of categories or label facets we can also get from the KBs. Um, if we just combine the project uh, predicate and object together, we can actually club the subjects, so which leads to a category. So if we have such kind of input data, we can present them in simple bipartite chart. However, one Additional thing we have considered here, not all these entities or the facets are equally um, important or popular. So what about putting some score about these entity and facets nodes? So for entity, we considered the visibility of the entity and collected page view for the from Wikipedia. For the facets node, because it's a category, people do not really go or browse those categories. We consider the how many, uh, maybe the saliency comes from the, uh, whether they have the multiple edition of uh, uh, linguistic uh, uh, queue in the wiki page or not. So considering this kind of score, um, we start our facet iterative approach. Uh, so we consider the query, for this query, we basically prune this big graph to comparatively smaller graph. And from this graph, using those um, score for the entity and the facet nodes, we find a similarity graph for the entities available there. And the moment we have such a similarity graph, we actually use our objective function, particularly those three components that we talk about. We use a random of best approach starting from the query in this particular graph uh, to until the work converges. And the moment it converges, we consider the scores. Again, the scores coming from those similarity, three similarity components. <laughs> Um, we basically take those top K candidates and say that that's the first group. And the moment we have the first group, we penalize the sum of the ages here to uh, say that they are already have been found in the previous group so that the similarity graph gets changed. And then the diversity is imposed when we find the next group. So that's actually the iterative approach in a nutshell. So when we look at the evaluation uh, for particularly this case, one of the biggest challenge was that there is no such data available. So we went with um, crowdsourced ground truth data. We particularly collected ground truth data for 100 entities. And uh, these entities are coming from three different domain. But uh, you can see these are the total number of categories or facets considered for the input graph with 50K entities. So when we have such kind of data, and certain evaluation metric that we can we have used. One is this quality at K, finding out how the um, faceted recommended groups are similar to the ground truth. Um, a bit of precision-based matrix, however, slightly different from existing B cube method. We also consider those metric as well. Not going to talk about it here. Uh, so this is some results we can get. So if we search for Max Planck in uh, Max Planck for uh, with facets, we get the idea that if we are looking for three top diverse groups that uh, a user would get or try to explore, could be the German physicists, Nobel laureates in physics, and quantum physicists with uh, some prominent. Uh, physicists here who are related to uh, Max Planck. 
So if we look at the extrinsic evaluation for the, our method, we have seen actually we consider four baseline. Uh, SISA is very prominent iterative approach uh, baseline, um, and ego set and fuse are comparatively new baseline with the uh, uh, with the embedding based clustering approach because we have so much uh, LLM model available for us. So here, if we look at here, then we still see that our method passes for fun significantly well and this particular case we considered the ground truth data to compare whether we also use because as i said there is no such benchmark data so we also actually considered uh, the our results and we asked crowdsource to check whether they find how they compare among each of these baseline and uh, they here also clearly the facet seems to be find or preferred by the users um, often. We also have a uh, explain, uh, evaluation for the explanation label. Here you can see slight uh, uh, underperformance of facets for this particular domain and this due to most of the time people uh, wanted to label a more general label like they prefer uh, physicists than particularly say German physicists. So these are the reason. Otherwise, for easier or less diverse data sets, we get uh, definitely outperformed. So on a takeaway, I would say that uh, even though there are so much embedding based approach and the uh, sophisticated clustering approach, uh, the it, random work based iterative approaches are still outperform this embedding based clustering approach. However, this clustering approach is slightly faster than the random or best approach. And finally, when we introduce that saliency score, that actually have a very good and positive effect on finding the related entities. So that's all. Um, thank you. I am open for the question. If you have any question, you can also write me at uh, my mail address. Thank you. Thank you.